Hey, Jason here from Simply Swider. If your fridge just died after a power outage, don't panic. I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it in the next 10 minutes. The best part, most of these fixes cost under $50 and are totally DIY able, saving you hundreds compared to a service call. Before we get started, if you run into any questions, jump into our Facebook group. Links in the description. We've got thousands of people helping each other fix their appliances, and I pop in there daily to help out. All right, let's talk about one of the most stressful appliance emergencies out there. When your fridge goes dead after the power comes back on, you're standing there looking at hundreds of dollars worth of food, and that thing is just sitting there like it's giving up on life. Here's the deal. It's not the blackout that kills your fridge. It's actually when the power comes roaring back. Those voltage spikes can absolutely fry the sensitive electronics inside these modern refrigerators. I had this lady call me last month in a complete panic. Her fridge went dark after a storm and she had a whole week's worth of groceries just sitting there. Turns out it was a $20 part that got zapped by a power surge. That's what we're gonna to prevent today. First, let's make sure your fridge is actually getting power. You'll need about two minutes for this step. I know it sounds obvious, but in 30% of my service calls after outages, it's just a trip breaker. Grab a small device like a phone charger to test with. Here's what you're gonna do. Check whether the fridge's circuit breaker has tripped at your electrical panel. Sometimes those surges are strong enough to pop the breaker as a safety measure. Try plugging something else into that same outlet, like a lamp or your phone charger. If that other thing powers up just fine, then you know the outlet's good. Take a close look at your fridge's power cord too. I've seen surge damage actually burn the plug or melt parts of the cable. Now here's a quick way to tell if your fridge is getting juice, if the interior lights come on when you open the door, or if that digital display is lit up, then power's flowing. The fans might be running too. If you're hearing absolutely nothing and seeing zero lights, we've probably got a power issue to sort out before we dig deeper. Moving on to the brain of your refrigerator and that main control board, this thing coordinates every single function in your fridge from the compressor cycling to the ice maker. Problem is, it's also the most vulnerable part when those voltage spikes hit. These boards are packed with tiny electronic components that just can't handle anything much beyond normal household voltage. When the power comes back at 200 volts or more, it's like trying to drink from a fire hose. Something's gonna break. You'll know you've got control board damage if your fridge won't start at all, the lights are acting weird, or you're hearing strange clicking noises coming from inside the unit. I remember this guy whose GE fridge started making this rapid clicking sound after a power outage, opened it up and found the control board was trying to send signals but couldn't complete the circuits. Before we locate this board, safety first, unplug your fridge and wait five minutes for capacitors to discharge. Now, finding this board varies by model, but it's typically behind a cover plate on the back of your fridge. Sometimes you'll find it underneath behind what we call the toe kick panel or even inside at the top when you open the door. Check your tech sheet, usually stuck to the bottom of the fridge for the exact location. Once you find it, look for obvious damage like burn marks, charred spots, or components that look swollen or melted. Sometimes you'll see a burnt smell too. Here's something cool. Some newer models actually have a reset button right on the board, worth trying before you replace anything. Another common victim of power surges is your compressor and its start relay. The compressor is basically the heart of your cooling system. It pumps that refrigerant around to keep things cold. The start relay is like the jump start it needs to get going each cycle. Both of these components are sitting at the bottom back of your fridge, and that start relay usually clips right onto the compressor itself. When either one gets fried by a surge, your fridge just won't cool anymore. You might hear it trying to start, maybe some clicking or humming, but then nothing happens. Here's a neat trick to check if your compressor's getting power. See if the condenser fan is running. They're on the same circuit, so if that fan's spinning, your compressor should be getting juice too. Testing the start relay takes 30 seconds. First, take a photo of how it's positioned, then gently pull it straight off the compressor. Give it a gentle shake next to your ear. A working relay should be silent, but if you hear rattling or loose parts inside, that relay is fried and needs replacement. You can also do a quick visual inspection for any burn marks or melted plastic. These relays are usually between 20 and 100 bucks, so way cheaper than replacing the whole compressor. But if that compressor itself got damaged by the surge, you're looking at a much bigger repair, sometimes more than the fridge is worth. 
Now, some of the newer refrigerators don't use traditional start relays. They've got what's called an inverter board instead. This thing controls the compressor speed and helps make the fridge more energy efficient. But just like that main control board, it's packed with sensitive electronics that don't play nice with power surges. If your inverter board gets zapped, you'll see similar symptoms. No cooling, strange noises, maybe error codes popping up on the display. This component usually runs between $100 and $600 to replace, depending on your model. The tricky part is diagnosing it properly because the symptoms can look like other problems. You're going to need a multimeter to test the voltages going in and coming out of the board. I'll be honest, this one can get pretty technical. So if you're not comfortable with electrical testing, this might be where you call someone like me. Don't be a hero when you are dealing with these voltage measurements. That's how you diagnose and fix a refrigerator that died after a power outage. Start simple with the power supply, then work your way through the control boards and compressor components. Most of these repairs are going to run you way less than a service call and definitely cheaper than replacing that whole fridge. Here's your prevention tip. The real damage happens when power surges back on, not during the outage. Before the next storm, unplug your fridge and wait five minutes after power returns before plugging it back in. This simple step prevents most surge damage. Share this video with anyone facing appliance troubles. These simple fixes can save hundreds in repair costs. If this helped you get your fridge working again, hit that like button and drop a comment below. Let me know which fix worked for you. Really helps other people with the same problem. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We'll get this out to more folks who need to save some time and money. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.